Okay, welcome back ladies and gents. A uh, short video today. Uh, I know it's been a while again since the last video. So last video we had the CRX on the dyno uh, after putting everything together and we didn't quite get to finish the tuning on the car. So we are at Vertex Performance and we managed to get the car on the rollers again just to finish up the pump fuel map. And we're kind of making similar figures. Obviously, it's two different dynos, so we can't expect to make the exact same number, but it's very, very close power-wise, basically. It's very, very similar. So, we actually want to do a little, like, comparison. Seeing that we have a stock K24A3 with a, a Type R head and some cams and the ITBs, it's very similar to what most people have on on the um or with the street cars so what we what we decided to do is maybe seeing like again seeing that it's now stock we had the car tune on pump fuel maybe we might experiment with multiple fuels on the engine just to see how it like reacts to the engine as is so for instance we have some e e95 ethanol uh, we did have a bit of pump fuel still in the tank so we didn't like we didn't measure it correctly and like mix accordingly like, and make like a 50 50. Uh, we only ended up throwing the ethanol in the tank because we ended up running out of pump fuel and we were cutting it very close so if we were to now go get fuel at the, at the petrol station we would have probably ran out of time to finish off the car so we just chucked in a, a whole lot of ethanol and tried to like overpower the amount of pump that's in there and basically created a whole new map specifically for the E90, was it E95? So we will probably come back to the dyno um, in another video, tune the car completely on E95 and then drain out all the fuel and mix E95 with pump fuel uh, as like a 50-50 and then tune the car on that and overlay that data versus pump fuel versus full ethanol and then we'll get hold of some methanol as well and tune the car on methanol very similar to like this ethanol this uh, laboratory fuel and then get hold of some vpm5 vpm1 so at the moment i have vpm1 as well um, i'm still yet to get uh, vpm5 and then we'll do like a, a whole a whole lot of tuning and overlay all that data side by side basically so i'll, I'll try and do that comparison on the same day so there's no variations if it's like te a different day temperature humidity and whatever so today's video is not tuning related so today we are literally just gonna go bolster the hole basically and send it so we can have some testing in the car and see if everything works well together with one another so for instance we now obviously have some power on the on the on the car we're making some decent power with a bit of ethanol so we gain quite a bit of torque and kilowatts. We just want to get some, some testing in on the car and make sure everything works. Check the strain gauge, check if uh, the two-step works correctly, check if we can use traction control and just try and learn from the car uh, today, like testing it. And then at least we, we know more or less where we're at with the car um, because race day is coming up soon. So I don't want to waste race day having to learn on the car basically. So, um, the nice thing knowing that the car is stock it's gonna obviously be uh, much more reliable so it will buy me some more seat time basically to have multiple runs to figure out how to go faster with the car so again like i said i don't want to come to the track and have to um figure out if the car is dialed incorrectly to do a, a proper pass and so on so this is the only reason for testing so i know a lot some of you might think look it's a bit uh, dodgy or whatever because we not at a safe environment to do so but unfortunately that's just how it is we don't have um opportunities for test and tune and and things like that so apparently i, I heard rumors that there might be a test day uh, three days before race day but i again don't want to risk uh, wasting this time where i could have tested the car to now find out if it's legit or not so 
let's see what we can do today let's just have fun with the car and try and bring some more action back to the channel if you put it that way <laughs> Okay, yeah, Dane's complaining about the door being heavy. <laughs> struggling to put the door back on. <laughs> yeah, the car still is all like all OEM panels, so there's no fiberglass just yet. Um, uh, the bonnet, however, is, is going to be fiberglass. So we got ourselves a new bonnet that's closed in the center, so that's good. And then we'll probably just um, maybe just trim this area out for the ITBs to to clear because the I mean, we, that plenum, the airbox thing, we, we would have to still modify the bumper for and, and gain some more room for the airbox to clear. And then um, you guys are probably wondering how we're going to be moving this car. And we ended up modifying the traction bar again and weld the tabs on. So we welded these two tabs on so that we can mount the A-frame. So we transport in the car via the A-frame. Because our little test uh, strip is very close to the racetrack, so at least that's it's not bad. Okay, so Dane's just tightening up the A-frame, cover up the ITVs. We don't obviously have a bonnet here, so we have to roll out the bonnet. And then I also ended up doing this a while ago. I made a little wiring harness that connects to my lights. It's a little dirty. <laughs> so this is my front lights, tail lights, indicators, and this plugs straight into this little harness that I made for the tow plug behind any vehicle. So like universal tow plug. So that's sorted. Lights are connected. Let's see there's a bit of a shortage of the earth side to reinforce it earthy but other than that it worked it's visible people can see <laughs> okay now we can remove the wheels put the slicks and then check our surface out so we came here before and a lot of other people also come here to test and so on so you can see guys were prepping burnouts and so on <laughs> but yeah this like i said this is our basically our only opportunity to gather as much data as possible before the race day so we don't technically waste our time at the track
very interesting. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it felt amazing. Like just to be in the car again, to feel the power, feel the car move, smell the tire. Amazing, really amazing. Um, and we learned quite a bit. We managed to sort of dial the car correctly in. We did notice fueling and stuff is is maybe not on on target. Where we, where we like wanted to be but that's fine at least now we know so we save ourselves from having to go through all that trouble dying in the car like in at the track so at least now going to the track we can go with way more confidence and at least we, we have an idea more or less on what to do with the car that definitely was well worth the, all the effort now to get this car tested make sure the car runs correctly and obviously gather as much data as possible so we, i'm definitely looking forward to msa and i definitely hope you guys are excited for me as well because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rock the city we're gonna, we're gonna bring gonna... the heat <laughs> <laughs>